our first topic for biochemistry is all about the introduction. This will be our objective. So first and foremost, we will discuss what is biochemistry in its school and its central the life sciences. After which, we'll get to know this biomolecules and its role in the body, and then discuss how to name organic components. And lastly, we will also identify different types of functional groups. And basically, you really need to memorize its structure. So first, what is biochemistry kids? Now, we need to understand the origin of its name because from there you'd get to un you'll get to have a deeper understanding as to the role of biochemistry. Remember that bios means life and that whenever we talk about chemistry, it deals with the composition, the structure, and properties of different substances, especially those transformations that they need to do. So thus, as you can see here in our slide, biochemistry deals with the study of the chemistry of living organisms. So again, bios means life. So we're looking into the different composition, structure, pop properties of those living organisms. Of course, our biochemistry here will focus on now biochemistry also studies biological processes at the cellular and molecular level. So that is why uh, in terms of the topic outline, iba meron po regarding discussing your transcription, translation processes in relation to your genetics, okay, DNA and RNA, and that is already on the molecular level. Biochemistry also become the foundation for understanding all biological processes. This one is in relation to your last bullet, in which your biochemistry is concerned with the physiochemical processes underlying our body. So what are these biological and physiochemical processes? So that is in relation to digestion, absorption, circulation, respiration, metabolism, even growth and reproduction. Also, last decades, biochemistry has provided explanations for the causes of many diseases in humans, animals, and plants. And I'll get to discuss this further as to how it provided explanation as we go along with the discussion. So let's proceed. Now, in the biochemistry for medical technologies, we are looking into the clinical side. So when we say clinical biochemistry kids, this is dealing with the measurement of the different chemicals in our body, different substances, so proteins, your enzymes. And clinical biochemistry is actually divided into physiological and you have physiological. So when we say physiological, these are all the processes in our body. We say pathological, we are looking at the pathology, the abnormal process. So every time you get to encounter the word pathological, this is really thing to or this means about the causes of diseases, about pathology. So how about the roots of biochemistry? When, where, or who started biochemistry? So we actually have a lot of scientists in terms of discoveries and such. But then we will not be naming it all. So there are just a few people presented here. First, we have Carl Schill. He is a Sw Swedish founder of biochemistry who studied the chemical composition of matter in the 1700s. We also have Schleiden and Schwann, formulated, who formulated the cell theory also have Walter Fleming, who discovered chromosomes in 1875. See Carl Newberg, who is a German scientist who coined the word biochemistry. Then we have Hans Krebs, who proposed the Krebs cycle of TCA in 1937. So when we say TCA kids, that is your tricarboxylic acid cycle. And then 
M. Den and Mayer Ho, who described the glycolytic pathway in 1925. And lastly, James Watson and Francis Crick, who described the double helical structure of DNA in 1925. Again, as you all know, there are a lot of other scientists pa, or mga discoveries in relation to biochemistry, but uh, here in our discussions, we we'll just focus on the f this following. One thing that I would like also to point out in terms of Walter Fleming kids is that he is actually the founder of nitrogen. Since diba, we are talking about the discovery of nitrogen. So why do we need to study biochemistry? How, is imp how important biochemistry is for us medical technicians? Now, biochemistry is needed for us to be able to describe and explain in molecular terms all chemical processes of living cells. And the knowledge in biochemistry is also essential to life sciences. Biochemistry kids also have a reciprocal relationship between biochemistry and medicine. Na a reciprocal relationship si biochemistry with medicine. And normal biochemical processes of our body is actually the basis of health. Biochemical research also has impact on nutrition and preventive medicine. So what I would like to really point out here, kids, is that in terms of the professional subjects here in your course, in your in med, uh, as a medical laboratory scientist in the future, very important si biochemistry in a subject because Maga, this is the basis of all professional subjects. Lalo na po when you reach your clinical chemistry. So even sa hematology, even in your strategy, you can encounter the different terms being discussed here in biochemistry. Because yun nga, siya yung pinaka-basis ng ating different diseases. So doon natin malalaman kung ano yung sakit ng isang tao when we are going to look into those cellular and molecular uh, mga processes like or even your substances like for example bakit may diabetes mellitus they're actually looking into your glucose and glucose is a biomolecule so ganun ka important si biochemistry kids so please 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 kahit na po di naman talaga major si biochemistry it is not a professional subject, but might as well really study your biochemistry well because whatever is being discussed here in biochemistry, again, you'll get to encounter this once again in your professional subjects. Di po maintindihan si biochemistry or if you get to hate biochemistry, all the more your professional subjects. Okay? So biochemistry kids, ito po talaga yung pinaka point. Most and perhaps all diseases have a biochemical basis. So, na mention ko po kanina, best example is your diabetes mellitus because one biomolecule na yun yung reason why there is diabetes is because of your glucose. There is an increase in the concentration of your glucose causing such disease. So basically, Biochemistry is a two-way street in which biochemistry and medicine goes hand in hand. So, diba, whenever we talk about medicine, this is really pertaining in terms of your different diseases, whether we look into genetic diseases ba, or any sila na mga sakit. These are just some examples. And when we try to look into the cause of these diseases, this is relating already to biochemistry. When diabetes mellitus, the reason behind why there is such disease is because of your carbohydrates, a problem or imbalance in the concentration of your glucose. In terms of atherosclerosis, looking into the kids. In terms of your sickle cell anemia, looking into proteins. And of course, in terms of your genetic diseases, we are looking into nucleic acids. So in our profession, kids, uh, it goes hand in hand by medicine because those that we test in the laboratory are also in relation to biochemistry. 
testa sa atong blood sample, sa ato ang mga lipids and lipoproteins, even your proteins. from your hematology, we will look into red blood cells. So again, very important. Okay? Even kung mag-med school mo kids, I guess, mabalik kaya po ni ang biochemistry subject. Pero syempre, dito sa med, deeper, it's deep pa na discussion ang inyo. So what are the major causes of cases? We actually have a lot. One, we have your physical agents. It could also be because of certain chemical agents, biologic agents, and genetic diseases. So an example of your physical agents could maybe there is a mecha mechanical trauma, diba? like for example, na nagrali, tapos na iguka, na ay nagbato sa imu. So that is a mechanical trauma. It could cause death because of hemorrhage. Ba? It could also be because of temperature extremes. Uh, taas na kayo ang inyo that na maabot na siguro 40 degrees Celsius and yet and after that if di siya ma-manage kids pwede mag-convulsion pwede dyan po na ikamatay other than that pwede po radiation so that is why uh, dili good always dapat uh, magpa-x-ray or ma-expose uh, ng radiation it should be at least siguro as much as possible siguro ingo na to maximum na ang 5 times in a year Okay, that would really cause certain detriments in our health. And then, another example, last example stated here is electric shock. How about chemical agents? So, any toxic compounds that you could think of, even drugs? As a shampoo kids, there are a lot of uh, diseases, lalo na yung sinasabi nating mga occupational health, because of too much exposure of certain chemicals, kaya nagkakasakit yung isang tao. And we are actually also prone to that. Especially when we are talking about your histopathology section, wherein ang dami-daming chemicals na haharapin, from your silene to your silene, and although di naman talaga ganun kadami, you don't get to always inhale, but prolonged inhalation, prolonged small amounts of inhalation of that could still cause certain problem in our body. How about biologic agents? So, these are your viruses, your bacteria, your fungi, and your pathogens. Ate mga specific subjects for this one. Your bacteriology, parasitology, you also have microbes. Get to encounter or you get to memorize different names of these biologic agents. And of course, with genetic disease, we are looking at your nucleic acid, whether or not there is mutations in your certain gene. And what happens is, lalabas talaga yung mga sakit-sakit. Other major causes pa is it could be due to lack of oxygen or immunologic reaction. Or maybe there are nutritional imbalances. And lastly, endocrine imbalances. A lack of oxygen, kids, is simply, uh, we all know how important oxygen is in our body. But the problem with having a lack of oxygen, we could actually look into, maybe there is loss of blood. Remember that your red blood cells have the major role transporting oxygen in the different parts of our body. Anemic tayo, you would really expect na dali kayo tahang ako and uh, there is really a limit in terms of how much activity we could do. So that is why if there is a decrease the oxygen carrying capacity also of your blood, maybe because there are problems in terms of the chemical structure of the red blood cell rendering incapable of binding oxygen, so magkakaroon din po tayo ng dyan. Or it could also be due to mitochondrial poisoning. Mitochondria, remember, that is the powerhouse of the cell. And one important substance that it needs for it to do its job, it's actually your oxygen. Next, in terms of immunologic reaction, uh, dito po yung mga anaphylaxis, yung autoimmune disorder. 
anaphylaxis is relating to allergic reaction, pero siya yung parang pinaka-worst na side. And then, autoimmune disorders, this is in relation to yung mga immune system natin na nagkakaroon ng problem because it's no longer able to recognize which one is really normal or not. And then, nutritional imbalances, if my deficiencies are excess, just like vitamin deficiency, Maganon. So, I guess medyo na-touch ito na topic in your CPH. And then, endocrine imbalances. So, whenever you hear the word endocrine, this is relating to hormones. Uh, from your thyroid hormones, D3 and T4, using hyperthyroidism, una sila kids. So, there are really a lot of causes of diseases. And to know why there is such a disease, biochemistry would really so now let us review your biomolecules. So what are biomolecules? So biomolecules are molecules found in living matter. So there are two broad types of biomolecules. We have your small molecules and you have your macromolecules. Actually, we could call small molecules as micromolecules. So there are micro and macromolecules in our body. But we will focus on your macromolecules. And the importance of your macromolecules is that these are essential structures for the basis of life. And they control and regulate these processes or any biochemical processes in the body. They are also responsible for energy exchanges, irritability, metabolism, mobility, and even reproduction. So what are our examples of biomolecules? There are actually four major classes of biomolecules. So we have your proteins, your nucleic acids, your carbohydrates, and your lipids. So kung mapansin ninyo, dun sa topic outline natin in biochemistry, we will really discuss each of this. So may kanya-kanya po talagang topic, itong four major biomolecules ninyo, so that alam nyo talaga ano-ano-ano yung mga under kay protein, yung mga under kay carbs, yung mga under kay lipids. So based on this four major class, let us give an example into what are your primordial biomolecules. So syempre si protein, si nucleic acid, si carbohydrates and lipid, these are big molecules, these are macromolecules. So we'll try to look into what are their composition. So, we have amino acids, like for example, your glycine, alanine, and serine. But remember that amino acids are your building blocks of protein. We also have your nitrogenous bases, your pyrimidines and purines, and your sugars. Examples are your glucose, galactose, and mannose. Then we also have a sugar alcohol, like your glycerol. And then your nitrogenous alcohol, like your choline. And lastly, your fatty acids like your palmitic acid, linoleic acid, linolenic, and your arachidonic acid. So, itong nitrogenous bases nyo, this is in relation to your nucleic acids. E diba, this is a very important component in your DNA and RNA structure. And then in terms of your sugars and your alcohol, so this is in relation to your carbohydrates. Then your fatty acids here in the last par part is in relation to your lipids. So now let us discuss your organic compounds. Now, organic, compound, uh, organic compounds, kids, are the chemical basis for life itself. So it is a very, it is very important na basis in terms of our standard of living. And whenever we talk about organic compounds, one thing that should come into your mind is in terms of the study of different hydrocarbons. So in relation to those compounds na may carbon, na may hydrogen, and other derivatives. So before we discuss specific examples of what are these organic compounds, we need to understand first how your organic compounds are being named. So there are three Import uh, three things that you need to remember. One is in terms of counting the number of carbon atoms present. Second is to look into the type of carbon-carbon bond. 
And lastly, in terms of the type of compound that is, uh, in ty type of compound that is also present. So start with the counting in the carbon atoms. So depend on the number of carbon, then that would be the root name of your organic compound. So if isa lang, then meth, pag dalawa eth, pag three prop, four bot, five pent, six hex, seven hep, eight oct, nine non, and ten is dec. Iba familiar kayo po with the words methane, ethyl, propane, butane. So those names, as to the reason why they have such name, is because of the number of carbon atoms that is present in their structure. After counting the carbon atoms, let us look into the type of bond that is present. If there is only one, there is only a carbon-carbon single bond, isa lang yung bond na present sa structure, then there is this suffix na an, and then if it, if it contains a carbon-carbon double bond, then yung suffix is en, diba? methane, methane, ganun. And then for the type of compound, we need to check if they are an alkane, alkene or alkyne, or they are other complex organic compounds pa. So let us discuss further what are these alkanes, alkenes, alkynes, and what are your complex organic compounds. So there are actually two general classifications of organic compounds. So one is being your hydrocarbon. From the name itself, you already get an idea as to what hydrocarbons are. Iba hydrocarbon. So meaning this substances, these organic compounds contain only your carbon and your hydrogen. And there are actually two types of hydrocarbons. So you have your aliphatic hydrocarbon and you have your aromatic hydrocarbon. Yung na-mention po natin kanina, kids, yung alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes, this one, this is under your aliphatic hydrocarbons. Whereas your aromatic hydrocarbon, yung pinaka-clue nyo dito for you to be able to identify if it is aromatic is the presence of a benzene ring. What is this benzene ring? Diba? This one. Katong ginaingon nila na piatos na gitaw. Why? Because aliphatic hydrocarbons do not contain such ring, only your aromatic hydrocarbon carbons. So, yun na agad yung main difference nila. So, here, this is a schematic diagram in terms of understanding further the two different types of hydrocarbons in terms of your aliphatic and aromatic. So, agad-agad, kids, pag may benzene ring, that is already your aromatic. But in terms of aliphatic, we could further differentiate them in terms of kung saturated ba or unsaturated ba siya. So for us to know if it is saturated or not, that depends on the type of bond that is present. So as defined here, if it is saturated, it contains a single CH bond. But if it is unsaturated, then it should contain two or more CH bond. So those that are under your unsaturated, yun po yung alkenes and alkynes. The only saturated aliphatic hydrocarbon are your alkanes. And as defined here, alkanes will contain only a single bond. Pag alkenes, at least one double bond. Pag alkynes, at least one triple bond. And very easy ang naming ng compound kung alkane, alkene, alkyne. Actually, kung ano yung name, yun yung suffix niya. So, kaya nga may example po tayo dito. Diba si ethane? Diba? Alkane, ethane. Alkenes, ethene. Alkynes, ethyne. So, ganun po yung ating aliphatic hydrocarbons. So, these are just other examples, kids. And diba kung makita nyo, this is your alkane. This is your alkene. And what do you get to observe in their structure? Ba? Ano meron? Here in your alkanes, wala po talaga kayong makikita na double bond. Everything is a single bond. But for your alkin, ayun, may isa. As in isang double bond lang po talaga sa structure. 
isa. How about your alkynes? So literal, now when we say triple bond, so meaning you get to see a triple bond, tatlong lines. And the best example for this is your ethyne or most commonly known as your acetylene. Diba? C2H2 having a triple bond connecting your carbon and carbon. So our second classification of organic compound is your substituted hydrocarbons. Now why is it called a substituted? So substituted hydrocarbons in which one or more hydrogen atoms is replaced by another atom or group of atoms. And your substituted hydrocarbons, kids, are grouped in terms of what functional group is present. So when we say functional group, it is an atom or group of atoms arranged in a particular way that is primarily responsible for the chemical and physical properties of the molecule which it is found. So yun yung mga substituted hydrocarbons nyo na kumbaga kids, instead of just having a hydrogen and carbon, there are any other atoms that is added. So like for example, your nitrogen ba, your sulfur ba, or may mga oxygen na. So that is your substituted hydrocarbons. And these substituted hydrocarbons, meron po tayong dapat i-memorize na mga functional groups. So, yan po yung ating i-discuss next. What are these common functional groups? So, there are actually three. Ano? There are actually four. Four different functional groups. You have your carbon oxygen, your carbon sulfur, your carbon nitrogen, and lastly, your esters and amine. So, the challenge here in your functional groups, kids, is to really memorize the structure. Kasi doon lang din po natin ma-understand as to what functional group they are once we get to know the structure. Structure lang naman po talaga yung basis dito. Kasi hindi lang naman kasi isang example si carbon oxygen group. There are a lot. So kung i-memorize lang natin na as long as may oxygen yun na yun, so that is completely wrong. So to give you an idea, these are your carbon oxygen group. Diba tingnan nyo? Kaya nga sila carbon-oxygen group because they all contain your oxygen na molecule. So what differentiates them is in terms of how they are arranged. So there are six carbon-oxygen group. Your alcohol, your aldehyde, your ketone, your carboxylic acid, your acid anhydride, and lastly, your ether. And as you can see here, how they are named is also presented. And an example is also given. So, start with alcohol kids. As long as may OH kayo na makikita, that is already your alcohol. Very easy to remember, even in the word alcohol, you get to see the OH group. So, all alcohols are named with OL at the end of its name. So, that is why, di ba, may ethanol, methanol. So, what do we mean by the letter R? Our group kids is just an abbreviation for any group that can be attached to your main molecule. It is an abbreviation for any group in which a uh, carbon or hydrogen atom is attached to the rest of the molecule. So meaning to say here, ito na mga R group, pwede kahit anong molecule yung i-attach natin. So the very basis of this functional group kids is kanijud. Any main content you need other than the R group. Okay? So, ito, aldehyde. So, C double bond O with H. Yung naming niya is AL ang last. So, for example, ethanol. Here in your ketone, C double bond O but dalawang R group. So, meaning, para siyang aldehyde but with the removal of your H, na uh, your hydrogen. So, dalawang R group yung idedicate. Doon sa carbon double bond O nyo for ketone. And the naming is that it should end with O and E. And exam an example is your propanone. Next, your carboxylic acid. For carboxylic acid, it is almost the same with aldehyde. But with the addition of another oxygen. Doon sa hydrogen nyo here. So, C double bond o uh, OH. And then our group here on your left side. For carboxylic acid, it ends with oic acid. 
And an example for that is your ethanoic acid. How about your acid anhydride? So very obvious ang acid anhydride nyo because it contains two carbon and double bond oxygen and then my oxygen in the middle of it. So acid anhydride kids, in terms of naming it, it should end with oic anhydride. So an example is your ethanoic anhydride. Medyo obvious kasi andun talaga yung word na anhydride nyo. And as to ether, tanging oxygen lang and then two R group can be added. So with ether, it can either be named as oxy. Ah, kumbaga, yung oxy nyo na word kids, it should be an, in the middle of the name. And then yung suffix nyo is in. For example, your methoxyethane, di ba? Oxy is in the middle. And then sa end is your in, your A-N-E. So these are your carbon-oxygen group. Now let us proceed with your carbon-sulfur group. So there are two, your sulfhydryl and your disulfide. Start sa kay disulfide kids. Disulfide kasi dalawa yung sulfur na present. And in terms of naming kids, very obvious, may disulfide po talaga sa end ng pangalan ng substance. So for example, your dimethyl disulfide. Now, how about your sulfhydryl? Just remember the word sulf and hydryl kasi yung meron is your sulfur and your hydrogen. But in terms of naming your sulfhydryl, dalawa po yung ating ruling. Pwede yung suffix ng mga sulfhydryl, again when we say suffix, yung ending is thiol. Just like this one, diba? butane dithiol. Pwede din po yung prefix, wala pong thiol but yung prefix is either of these two. Your mercapto, just like this one, diba? mercapto benzoic acid, or pwede rin po sulfanil. Although wala lang po akong example, but then again, a compound having a mercapto or sulfanil at the beginning of its name is considered under your sulfhydryl group. So next, how about your carbon nitrogen? So, dalawa lang po yung carbon nitrogen. We have your amino and your quaternary. So, with amino, that will always be an H2. But with quaternary kids, very obvious a name. Quaternary kasi, your nitrogen group is surrounded by four CH na compounds. So, kaya siya quaternary. Surrounded by four different carbon-hydrogen compounds. Then we have your esters and amines. So we have your thioester. So here in thioester, it should always end with ATE. So kaya meron po tayong eth ethane thio thioate or your propane thioate. So ATE. As to your phosphoester, kids, uh, ano kong ito? Meron talagang word din na phosphoester. So try to observe its structure. So here, phosphoester kasi may presence na ng phosphate group nyo. And then with thioester, ito yung basis na other than sulfur, dapat may carbon double bond O. And then, your esters and amide. So here, for your ester kids, mura lang na siya ug katoy nyo hang thioester. But then for ester, what is present, puro lang oxygen. So carbon double bond O, and then oxygen, and then dapat may R group na mismong nakakabit sa oxygen nyo. And then for amide kids, mura lang niya siyag amine, but then ang na-add is dapat may carbon double bond oxygen siya. So andito po yung naming, and then here for amide. So that ends all of your functional groups. So, this is already a summary of all that we have discussed. So, ito na po yung sabi ko in terms of the difference between your amine and your amide. Pareho sila may NH2 but with amide, there is an additional carbon double bond oxygen. So, naka-highlight po dito yung mga dapat yung tandaan in terms of its structure mismo. Diba? From your alcohols to your aldehydes. So, yun again, be familiar with the structure because... Uh, isa yun na siya sa i-question siya uh, nako sa inyo ha be it sa quiz or sa inyong exam 
So now we go to the different chemical reactions occurring in our body in, or in any living matter as such. So we have what we call your oxidation, reduction, hydrolysis, condensation, and tautomerism. So I know you are already familiar with this. So let's consider this as a review na lang po for you to remember the roles or processes being done under each of these chemical reaction. So start now with oxidation. So na lang ipakita ni Daan, kids. Yun. So how do we define oxidation? So according to this, here in the slide, the oxidation is the process wherein most of the energy liberated by living matter is derived from the oxidation of organic substances such as your carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. Medyo complicated yung definition. Kasi ang isa sa inyong tandaan with oxidation, kids, is there is a loss of electrons. So yan talaga yung pinaka-basis ng oxidation. So that is why when you get to encounter the word na hala na oxidize siya, there is a loss of your electrons. And there are actually two kinds of oxidation. Anaerobic and aerobic. So ano yung difference lang talaga ni aerobic and anaerobic? This is in terms of the presence of your oxygen. When you get to encounter the word na aerobic ang process, that means na ang primary requirement niya is there should really be presence of your free oxygen. Pag anaerobic na gani na siya kids, meaning walang oxygen na present. And actually, most of the chemical processes in our body really needs oxygen. Kaya nga, di ba, kailangan talaga si red blood cell na maka-carry ng oxygen kasi yun yung role niya, it transport oxygen in different parts of our body because those processes in our body really needs oxygen to start its process. Kaya nga, breathing is our, breathing means life. If di na talaga hinga, then mamatay good po ta. Now, although there are processes that do not need oxygen, but they're uh, very rare, or usually pag mag aerobic oxidation ta kids, ano siya, parang compensation lang. To compensate the lack of oxygen para naagiha po further process na ma mag-proceed. But then, dili siya dapat forever. It still needs to be corrected. So, dapat na agya po introduction sa oxygen. Kay aerobic yun ang ato ang primary na need. So, you'll get to understand more aerobic and anaerobic. Especially yung de definition ng anaerobic dito na part. When we will be discussing your different metabolic processes. Doon yung maa-appreciate ano talaga yung difference nitong aerobic and anaerobic. But as of this moment, introduction pa man ta, so just remember that aerobic needs oxygen, anaerobic hindi kailangan ng oxygen. So this is an example of your oxidation, diba? Loss of an electron. So for example here, uh, here in your pyruvic acid, as, ex uh, as stated here, sa second bullet ng anaerobic oxidation nyo, the substance undergoes oxidation either by a loss of hydrogen as in the oxidation of your lactic acid to pyruvate. And diba sa ano yung mapapansin nyo? Lactic acid to pyruvate. Diba from here? And from here, nawala yung hydrogen nyo. So ang nangyari, puro double bond na dito sa, car sa dalawang carbon nyo in the middle. So next, is reduction. As you all know, oxidation and reduction will always go hand in hand. Reduction is just the reverse of your oxidation. So if my loss of electrons, sky oxidation, gaining of electrons, sky reduction. Now reduction may be brought about by either loss of oxygen or gain of hydrogen. And whenever oxidation occurs, there will always be kids. Always a corresponding reduction. So that is why you always get to hear the term redox reaction. Kasi di po pwede magkahiwalay yung oxidation and reduction nyo. So all foods and organic substances have the property of taking up oxygen. Hence, they are considered as reducing agents. So na po yung example natin sa taas. Yung magnesium nyo to 
magnesium 2 plus is an example of oxidation. Yung copper 2 plus nyo na naging copper na lang is an example of your reduction. And actually, yung kanina, dun sa oxygen, hindi may makita na kayo dito na term na reduced. Diba? Lalo na yung NAD nyo na from NADH plus naging NAD na lang for pyruvate pyruvic acid to lactic acid, uh, gaining your hydrogen atom, so that is reduction. Okay, I hope nasabtan to siya. Next, we go to hydrolysis. Now, hydrolysis is a chemical process in which a molecule of water is added. Diba? From the word hydro here, kids, this is really referring to hydrogen. And asa taana na hydrogen, makakita the water yun na siya. So, every time a hydrolysis will, will occur, there should really be presence of water. So, every time water is added, what happens here is mag-split or na-eye breakdown. So, that is why there is a word palang na lysis referring to breaking down. So, sometimes the addition of water causes both substances and water molecule to split into two parts. Through hydrolysis, large molecules are broken down into smaller and simpler forms. So that is the very basis of hydrolysis kids. Adding water para mag-split into two. Para maging more simple and more gamay ang atuang mga compounds. So this is an example of hydrolysis in general lang kids. So kung salt ba na siya, kung acid ba na siya, or kung base ba na siya, Basta ka na tanan-tanan, dapat na agui addition of water para ma-broken down. So, for example, your sodium acetate can be broken down to acetic acid, sodium, and hydroxide upon the addition of water. So, in short, yung ating mga andito na part, mga large compounds na siya being broken down to get a more simpler na form. Or even kanikaning acetic acid din yung kids or kaning acetate, pwede pag yun na siya ma-further broken down, basta mao ang point sa inyong hydrolysis. The opposite of hydrolysis, kids, would be your condensation. So condensation is the reaction wherein yung simple fragments nyo unite with one another to form a more complex compound. So kung si hydrolysis, large to small, Condensation is small to large. So, condensation is the synthesis of complex substances like your glycogen and tissue proteins accomplished, is accomplished through this process. Let us look at these reactions. So, again, kids, you do not need to memorize this one. This is just a representation lang yun. So, when we say condensation combining, for example, oh, ito, combining two acid will result to forming one anhydride or combining an acid and an alcohol will make an ester. Combining an acid and a sulfhydryl group will become a thioester. Combining an acid and amine will form an amide group. Combining your phosphoric acid with an alcohol, then that is now your phosphoester. Again, that is condensation combining molecules together to form a larger one. Next, how about tautomerism? Now, tautomerism, kids, is the same as saying the word isomerism. Halo same lang yan sila. And the key word here in isomerism is kaling muntag isomere. So, what do we mean by isomeres? Isomeres, kids, are compounds having the same chemical formula pero different ang structure. So, here as we define tautomerism, tautomerism or isomeric transformation is the intramolecular rearrangement of atoms within a molecule leading to the formation of a new substance having distinctive properties of its own. So, again, yung atin dito, same ang chemical formula, different ang chemical structure. So let us take a look at the example of your glucose, galactose, and fructose. So, as, as you can see, the chemical formula of glucose is C6H12O6. If you try to look into the chemical formula of galactose and fructose kids, it is actually the same. My 6 pa rin kayo ka-carbon. You know, 
Diba? May 6 pa rin kayo na carbons, may 12 ka hydrogens pa rin po kayo, and may 6 ka oxygen. But what differs these three is in terms of the position of a certain molecule. So, yung mga naka-red kids, naka-highlight in red, yun yung differences nila. For example, here, compare glucose and galactose, ang nag-differ lang ang position ng OH. So, even as simple as that differentiation, kids, yung substance na din talaga siya. Or in terms of your fructose, ang nag-differ is here sa taas. Na diba, even here sa second portion ng carbon, instead of having hydrogen and OH, double bond O na siya. But then, if you count the number of carbon, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, all of these three are actually the same. What differs is again the chemical structures, and because they have a different chemical structure, magkakaroon sila ng distinct properties with each other. Yun yung point ng tautomerism nyo. Okay? So next, be familiar with the terms hydrophobicity and hydrophilicity. Why you're hydrophobic and you're hydrophilic. So, when we say hydrophobic, from the word phobic, meaning phobia, meaning they are afraid of water, thus they repel any water that is present. And those that are alkanes, even your oils and fats, these, they are hydrophobic. As to hydrophilic, from the word philic, meaning loving, so meaning to say they, ito, refers to a physical property of a molecule that can transiently bind or bond with your water. So, water-loving, and then hydrophobic, water-fearing. Next, and I think this is already the last portion for our introduction to biochemistry in a discussion, is the different chemical bonds that is present. We have your ionic bond, your covalent bond, and your hydrogen bond. So, just a short description lang din po uh, about this. So, Ionic bond involves a transfer of one or more electrons from one atom to another, leading to the formation of an ionic bond. So this is an example of an ionic bond, kids, your sodium and your chloride. What exists here in your sodium chloride is actually an ionic bond. And usually, those that are, those na nag-combine is metal o non-metal, yan yung mga ionic bonding ang under. If pareho sila non-metallic kids in combination with each other, then that is now what we call your covalent bond. Covalent bonding involves a sharing, a sharing pair of electrons between atoms. Kaya kung makita nyo dito sa structure ito po, ito yung shared electrons in between. Then again, for covalent bonding, puro ni siya non-metallic na combination. So kaganina with ionic, metal plus non-metal, here in covalent bond, non-metal plus non-metal. And then lastly, for hydrogen bonding kids, so here there is a presence of your hydrogen. Yeah, nga siya hydrogen bonding. So hydrogen atoms here is bonded to a small, highly electronegative atom. So yung clue nyo po talaga dito with hydrogen bonding is that your hydrogen is bonded to a highly electronegative atom. So, to give you an example of your electronegative atoms, you have your chlorine, your chlorine, your oxygen, and your nitrogen. So, yan yung silang, sila na mga molecules ang commonly known na mga electronegative atoms, of which if it gets to bind or bond with your hydrogen, then Hydrogen bonding na ang tawag. And I would like to point out, kids, that your hydrogen bonds actually provide many critical and life-sustaining properties of water. And it is also a very important bonding in terms of stabilizing the structure of your proteins and DNA. And remember that your DNA are one of the major building blocks of our cells. So, grabe ka important good ato ang hydrogen bond. So, that is all kids for our introduction to biochemistry. So, by the time that we will meet, we will have a quiz for this one. And our topics would, topic would be all about your cell na.
Just a review lang din po about yourself. Thank you for listening and I hope you learned a lot.